Hello, Hello coders. coders! This is Kara, and I studied computer science. And this is Lucy, I studied information systems. And today we are going to tell you what are the differences between those two degrees and what kind of jobs you can expect after graduating each of them. We'll also be answering the question, is it possible to switch between the two career paths? So, before we start, make sure to check out Lucy's channel on which we also recorded another video about how to get a job at tech after graduating uni. You can find links in the description below. Now, let's get to it! So, Lucy, why won't you tell us more about what information systems degree is? Yeah, sure. So information systems is a degree that is offered um, in a lot of different unis and in my uni specifically, it's offered under the business school. Um, so because it's under the business school, we always learn about um, how information systems and different technologies can be used to achieve business outcomes. So I guess maybe it's not so much learning about how things work behind the scenes with different technologies and software, uh, but mostly about the business problems and how each business problem can be solved with different types of technologies. So I guess in our degree, um, we do courses such as introduction to databases, introduction to Java, um, and you know cybersecurity courses. So it's kind of like a mix of everything, but we also have courses that we have to take on the business side of things. So for example, you know accounting and economics. So I would say it's kind of a degree that sort of equips you for um, roles in the future, such as the business analyst roles and um, roles within, let's say, like cybersecurity or maybe becoming a tech consultant, because um, we really learn about how to bridge the gap between, um, I guess, the technical side of things with the business side of things. And when I joined university, they actually just said that um, information systems is a degree that's kind of the intersection between tech and business. And that really made me interested to join um, the program. And that's why I ended up studying information systems. So what would you say, like, what's the percentage of business versus the percentage of tech or like even how much, how much coding there is? Ooh, I would say there wasn't too much coding in my degree. Um, I think it depends on the university. And um, I would say in terms of, you know, the, the business side of things, that would be the majority of the courses. There were some programming courses. I think we had four um, and they were just kind of all Java courses. So Java was the main language that we learnt. And I'm sorry. <laughs> what was your favorite language? Kotlin. Oh my gosh, yeah. Which replaced Java. Replaced Java. So, but yeah, I, I guess we don't learn, you know, the algorithms and the things behind how the language works. So it's all sort of how to apply it to business situations. So we'll work on projects where we use Java to solve a problem. So I would say, yeah, that's the gist of it, the information systems degree. So I know that your story with studying information system was actually quite interesting. Can you tell us more about it? Yeah. So my journey with information systems was I started off studying it um, for the first year of university and I actually switched to computer science in my second year. And then in third year, I went back to information systems. So there, there was a few reasons to my switch to computer science and back to information systems. I think firstly, the switch to computer science was so that um, I could learn more about what happens behind the scenes because I was learning about all these like technologies and how they can be used but I wasn't really um, learning about how it actually works and you know the whole process behind it and I wanted to get my hands um, a bit more involved with the actual building and technical side of things so I switched to computer science but the reason I switched back is because it was taking up a bit too much of my time in university because I was kind of someone who wanted to um, balance university with a whole bunch of extracurriculars and part-time work and everything like that so I found myself spending a lot of times in the computer science lab trying to learn how to code and trying to understand the lectures and everything and personally I found the degree to be very hard so I really respect people who end up graduating from a computer science degree because after when I was learning it <laughs> I didn't really have time for anything else which was a reason I decided to switch back to information systems um, I, I would say that was the main reason I really enjoyed everything I was learning but um, I wanted to also have that extracurricular side of things as well because that year I committed myself to starting a new student society and I thought that you know being, being able to switch back to information systems gave me a bit more flexibility and um, personally for me it decreased my workload as well. Um, 
But one thing I wanted to mention is that even if you study both of the degrees, um, when you go to the workplace, it doesn't make um, a huge difference because sometimes the technologies and the skills that you have to have on the job can sort of be picked up along the way. Um, I guess university though gives you a really solid foundation on the things that would be very helpful for the workplace but nothing really is a prerequisite when you go into work. It's all about picking things up and learning along the way. Yeah, that's a really good point. And also like maybe you will get more foundations studying computer science about coding and systems and stuff like that, but you won't get much of the business side of things. Like I would say you get none of that. Um, maybe depends on your university. Mine had actually some business courses, but it was completely unrelated to my degree, like anyone could take them. So that's definitely also something to look at because you get really good foundations at the business side and technology side, while computer science gets a lot of like a really, really deep understanding of computer science things. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what was your experience like with computer science? Um, and I guess, what sort of courses did you do there? So I, um, I was actually coding before I went to university and it, it all just came up really naturally. Like I just wanted to make a theme for my blog I was writing and then I wanted to make this application. Then I wanted to make some uh, surprise puzzle website. And like, I just, whatever I wanted to make, I was like, okay, what skills do I need? Okay, I'm gonna learn that. Um, and then naturally I was like, okay, so if I want to learn more of that, computer science is probably the best degree to get all of the knowledge with mm -hmm. the foundations and with like a structure. And also the good thing is that if you are a self learner, you often just focus on what you want to build while computer science forces you to have like a really broad um, foundations and understanding of what computer science really is. So let's say self learned, I would probably only do not know how to do front end and Android, but then I learned about security, uh, cryptography, really interesting recently. Um, architecture, backend, distributed systems, a lot of maps. Did you did you have maps? Not really. Didn't have any maps. <laughs> yeah, we had heaps of maps, like fifty percent. Actually, uh, bachelor's was probably like eighty percent was maps. Oh wow! Okay. Uh, yeah, masters yeah. was flipped. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I actually I actually did bachelor's and master's, so it was five years. So that's just the way I got into computer science, but you don't actually have to know how to code before you join the university. There are courses, actually like the first programming course is split into two groups for people who did coding before and for people who didn't do coding before. So you don't have to worry about that. If you're interested to know details of how computer science degree looks like what kind of courses there are and what is really useful in the future. You can check out two of my other videos. One talks about the bachelors of computer science and another is about the masters of computer science I did where I go into detail with each course and then tell you about the future usages I found of each of those courses. You can find links to them in the description below. So Kara, what would you say is your least favorite and most favorite part of computer science? least and most favorite. Um, let's start with the least favorite and then we can just go up from there. Uh, I think the least favorite was the fact that they didn't really explain to us why they are teaching us so much maps and what are the actual practical uh, use cases of everything they are teaching us. So like now I'm working as a video software engineer and I use like linear algebra all the time and like I just wish they told us that this is what it can be used for because I would probably have much more motivation to learn. And my most favorite part was that we just got exposed to so many different domains of computer science that it was so much easier to have an idea of what's out there and which path I can follow. What about you? What about with information systems? What's your favorite thing? Oh, I think the favorite thing is exactly what you said, you know, how it's a broad range of um, domains that they cover. So we had courses that was kind of like introduction to business analysis for people who want to become a business analyst. And then there was also, you know, introduction to Java courses for people who want to explore programming. So I think it really showed us the different pathways that you can um, go into after the degree. But yeah, as I kind of mentioned before, the reason I did decide to switch to computer science was um, I wanted to know a bit more about what happened behind the scenes and information systems doesn't really offer that. 
that would be like I guess my least favorite part but it always depends on the person you are and um, maybe this will help you get a better understanding of which one you want to do when you join university you know computer science or information systems yeah and whichever one you join you have to remember that they're not gonna teach you everything and you're definitely not you know graduating and you're ready made to go and work and be like the amazing employee yeah. there's so much more to learn so much more yeah so it's university is mostly for you to learn to explore and if you want to be really good at something you have to spend your own hours doing it yeah definitely i think yeah most of what i learned from university was through extracurriculars and side projects and same with you right kind yeah of like, through your own learning and um working with others but that's that's the good point working with others like when you go to uni you actually meet people that have really similar interests so it's easier to do those like pair ups like oh i want to do this project but it would be cool to do it with someone else yes yeah 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 <laughs> yeah. yeah friends we used to have them they start off as friends but you work with them and then, <laughs> and then you hate them and then you hate them <laughs> So part number two and the question of what kind of doors do both of those degrees open for you? Like what kind of jobs can you apply for mm. after graduating? And let's start with information systems. Yeah, that's a really good point because when you um, start your degree, you want to be able to work backwards and think about what you want to do after university so that you can decide what you want to study in university. Um, but the really good thing is that information systems and computer science they're pretty broad degrees and they can open up a lot of doors in different um, industries so for example banking finance tech um, retail and a lot more and there's a lot of different roles as well that are um, varying between roles where you are kind of technical but you also work with customers or roles where you're completely technical um, and you help the internal team so there's so many different roles and pathways out there and I guess from my previous um, cohorts of people who studied information systems, looking at them, a lot of people have gone on to become, let's say, a product manager, a consultant, a business analyst. And the reason that it's really popular um, within the information systems space to go into those sort of roles is because it's all about um, being able to talk to customers and trying to address their business problems by recommending and helping them build solutions on the technical side of things. So, you know, sort of that bridge between the tech side and the business side. And I would say those are the most common roles. But keep in mind that there's a lot of other roles that you can go into by using the skills that you learnt from the information systems degree. So we have um, a lot of courses in the degree, at least in my university, where we do a lot of presentations and um, it's a lot of teamwork skills. So I, I think any time you're in a team situation, you'll be able to bring the skills that you've learned through information systems. Would you say it's similar for computer science where, you know, like you see people who study computer science, but they sort of end up maybe even going to like a completely different field. Um, what would you say are like maybe like some typical roles that people go into from studying computer science as well? So usually when you study computer science, it's because you want to code. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's the most, I would say the most popular is just becoming a software engineer or software developer. It's it's all the same. Um, and then you have many specializations. Spe I can never say this. Specialization. Oh, specialization. Special. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Specializations uh, <laughs> to choose from, and it's like so. You are a software engineer, which means you engineer software, you create software, which m might mean like creating backend, the servers. Uh, it can mean creating front uh, front ends, which is like web apps, or you can be a mobile engineer, either iOS or Android, or maybe both of them. You can like there's also like a lot of. Um, other domains which go more into like the scientific path, which is like machine learning, um, artificial intelligence, computer vision. There's a lot of there's a lot of roles where you can actually still stay on the academic path mm -hmm. and have a business impact. What else is there? That's that's kind of what you can get fresh out of university. Of course, later on you can think about roles like engineering manager or. Um, architect like a um, system architect is it um, yeah. it's 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 different than a solution architect it's more into a designing how all of those parts like backend frontend mobile mm -hmm. how they all go together there are also roles that are actually 
they don't require coding and it's very often like the infrastructure work and infrastructure engineers would often work with information system graduates and yes. uh, like solution architects because of like creating the whole infrastructure for a big application or uh, big systems. And then what you do is, is it's much more of a setting things up and making sure everything works right to get... Yep, so there's definitely a lot of roles that people from information systems and computer science degrees want to go into that don't necessarily involve writing any lines of code, you know, such as being a UX designer or being a content writer. And there's just a lot of roles out there for different skill sets, I guess, and different interests. That's a really good point because there are often people wondering if they can actually get a job in computer science related field if they are information system graduates or the other way around. Mm. Do you think it's it's easy to switch career? Can you do business analyst after being a computer science student or do you think you can be a software engineer after studying information systems? I think definitely. I don't think it's too common because I think people definitely go down there you know, traditional sort of paths, but I've definitely seen a lot of students who they study information systems and they realize that they actually want to go into the more technical programming software engineering side. So they would uh, take extra um, online courses or do some extra practice so that they can apply for those sort of roles. And there's also people from com computer science who decide to become, you know, a business analyst and Sometimes they would have to brush up on their interview skills for the soft skills side of things. And it's just all about trying to think about what gaps you have in your knowledge. So what university courses didn't really teach you and what you want to apply for in the workplace. And I think, yeah, it's definitely possible to switch between the two. And I've seen that as well. Have you seen people as well switch between, um, you know, going from computer science to a role that is typically for people who study like information systems? Yeah, I, I especially saw it often as an internal transfer. So if you are long enough with one company, you can sometimes be lucky enough that they will actually offer upskilling you. Upskilling, is that the word? Yeah, upskilling. Upskilling, yeah. I learned new English word <laughs> by accident. Uh, <laughs> so I know, I know people who switch specialties just between software engineering. That's probably the most common type of transfer. So being front-end engineer, they are trying back-end or me, I was an Android engineer and I'm doing front-end now. I also saw a data analyst actually doing software engineering job. Sometimes it's a soft switch, but it's, it's definitely a good experience when your em employer allows you to do that and helps you with it. And very often you also have an education budget uh, at work, so you can definitely use that for upskilling yourself. Yep, those are really good points. There are a lot of employers that sort of provide you with the opportunity to learn and there's a lot of internal resources available for you to make that sort of move. So, you know, in the case that maybe you join a company and the employer doesn't provide as many resources for you to upskill, what would you do in that case? Well, there's few things you can do. I would say first thing would be to find someone who's doing the role that you want to do and then just simply ask them to mentor you. And they will most probably say yes, because it's really flattering to be asked to mentor someone. Once you have that person, this kind of a role model, you can ask them, what are the skills are missing? How does your day-to-day -day job look like? What are the tools you're using? And then honestly, internet has answers to everything. So simply just learn find courses, there are free courses for everything as well. Uh, you don't have to pay thousands of dollars to change your career. You can, as long as you know what to look for, yeah. and that's what the mentor gives you, they don't have to necessarily mentor you, they can just kind of give you hints and advices. If you can't find that person, it's possible that maybe in your company there's just no such role. Look outside, look on LinkedIn, specialized forums, there's definitely a forum for each specific specialty, of software engineering or information systems. Mm, yeah, so that they can point you in the right direction, right? Yeah. Like there's so many resources out there and finding a mentor would help, you know, like they'll tell you what you should be looking at and maybe you can like decide on like a career progression plan or like a pathway for you to make that sort of move. Yeah, definitely. And once you feel ready, you can either ask that mentor person to recommend you for the new role, or you can just try applying to smaller companies, or you can try applying to huge companies, but like kind of on the graduate level, 
even though you have probably a little bit more experience, there are always options. Thanks so much for all the answers, Lucy. That definitely helped me to understand better what information systems is and what's the difference between that and computer science. And I hope it helped our viewers as well. One final thing before I let you go. What is your one piece of advice for people who want to study information systems? My one piece of advice for people who want to study information systems is to keep in mind that there's going to be a lot of group work for all of the subjects that you do. And it's all about um, the soft skill side of things as well. Try to have fun when you work in teams and always collaborate and share resources so that um, you know, you're kind of not just learning the degree, but you're meeting people along the way that you can potentially stay in touch with later on in your career. Yeah, and that's really important. I would say I would have a really similar advice for computer science. I would probably have a really similar advice for like any degree you're doing, meet people, make friends, because those friendships will last really long. And then looking for jobs later on, it might get really useful. I mean, I'm not saying to just get friends to get a job, like yeah, get same. friends because, you know, we are social beings. But that would be definitely one of them. And then the second thing I would say is definitely take your time and treat this whole degree as your time to explore, your time to see what's out there and what you like and what you don't like. Mm, yeah, I know we said one piece of advice, but yeah, one more thing to add on to that is yeah, one more thing. <laughs> um, one more thing to add on to that is... Oh, I forgot. <laughs> <laughs> so, those are all the questions we hope to answer in this video. If you have any more, leave them down in the comments below and we'll get back to you. So, thank you so much, Lucy, for being here on the channel and helping us understand the difference between computer science and information systems. Please don't forget to subscribe to Carol's channel and give this video a like. And also subscribe to Lucy's channel and definitely visit it to see the video we made there about getting a job at tech in 2021. Bye for now. Bye.